How would it feel to wake up in the morning and not be stressed out about your money? To be able to spend money without anxiety? To notice progress towards your goals of going on that tropical vacation or finally seeing your debt being chipped away or a plan to launch your business? What if I told you it was possible to stress less and achieve more? Here's the secret, though. In order to create outside changes, you've got to do the inside work of getting into a better relationship with money. Why? Because 80 to 90% of your money decisions, they're based on your emotions. And you can read all the blogs and listen to all the podcasts, but nothing will change with your money until you do the inner work. Good news. I have got the solution to help you, and I am going to be your guide. I'm launching my signature course on F Your Money on March 20th for two weeks. Yep, open to enroll until April 3rd. For this special launch, you can save $100 when you use code ETM at checkout at etmpod.link slash unfmoney. In this course, you're going to walk away with an awareness of the money patterns, beliefs, and thoughts that are keeping you stuck, tools and tips to create a healthy relationship with money, and you'll create a mindful spending plan to reach your money goals. So yes, you can start thriving financially. Unf Your Money course is the most affordable way to take control of your money, create a plan to reach your goals, and deal with the messy emotions of money. Grab your spot by April 3rd and save $100 when you use code ETM at checkout. Head to etmpod.link slash unfyourmoney or head to the link in the show notes. It will be right there. I'll see you in class. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because... Let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential. Three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. They're never going to say, no, how dare you ask? We're slashing your credit <laughs> limit and you're, you're, you're off the Christmas card list. That stuff, <laughs> oh, no. that just, stuff just doesn't happen. Hey, welcome back to Everyone's Talking Money. I am your host, Shauna. It is so good to have you with us. If you're new here, this is the show where we talk about personal finance tips mixed with the very sticky emotions around money so you can start stressing less and thriving more financially. If you're a regular listener, well, welcome back. This is going to be an episode you will want to bookmark. Did you know you can ask your credit card company to waive that pesky annual fee? You can also ask to lower your interest rate. The same goes for hospital fees and loads of other costs. You can ask for a lower payment on your vacation rental and when renting a car. The fact is there are hundreds of everyday expenses that you can save money on, but they all start at one place, asking questions. Our guest, Matt Scholes, personal finance expert, chief credit analyst at LendingTree, and author of the new book, Ask Questions, Save Money, Make More, wants you to know the questions to ask and what to say in seven key areas of life, credit and debt, healthcare, housing, shopping, travel, work, and relationships. The goal is to take control of your financial life and save a lot of money, as the book suggests. This episode, and really Matt's book, is a must-have money manual for success. 
We're going to talk about how to get lower rates on everything from your credit card annual fee to your mortgage to shopping at the grocery store and so much more. Your wallet will definitely thank you. Before we get into the episode, just a quick announcement. My course, Unf Your Money, is now open and available until April 3rd. You can find all the links in the show notes. Head to etmpod.link slash unfmoneycourse and use code ETM to get $100 at checkout. All right, let's start talking. I think a good way to start our conversation is to start with the quote that you used at the beginning of your book. I really loved. It's a quote by Alice Walker that says, the most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. And, you know, I was thinking about this as I was reading your book and I was kind of prepping for our conversation and, and thinking about our financial lives. What are the ways that you see all of us out there kind of giving up our power when it comes to money? Yeah, the, it was really the the perfect quote, I feel, for for the book because it the 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 book really is all about helping people advocate for themselves and to understand that the power they understand the power that they have and really what it all comes down to is the fact that people think that they that that they are not needed or that they are not valued and the truth is that if you're a good customer you are incredibly valuable to any company that you work with. And that's because so many companies look at people in terms of lifetime value, meaning how much they how much money they can make off of you during the time that you're a customer. And that's such an important concept and such kind of an underpinning of this book because it once you understand that and you negotiate and you ask for things, you understand that you're coming at it from somewhat of a position of power rather than mm, yeah. coming in on bended knee. And of course, I mean, it's it's little like Vegas casinos, right? I mean, the, the house is usually <laughs> going to win, but it doesn't mean that you can't get a little something back here and there. And once you in understand that that fee that you're asking to waive, or that, uh, uh, or that uh, T-shirt that they're willing to give, all that sort of stuff is basically like a rounding error or a grain of sand on the beach to them, but it's valuable to you. It it helps you feel a little more confident and a little more powerful in making these asks. I mean, I think I love this concept because the book is all about this idea that it, it everything stems from asking questions and that when we when we can ask these questions, we can save money, we can have things happen, we can have things waived. I mean, all sorts of different scenarios. And we're going to talk about some of those scenarios. I want to go through some of them. But this idea of of asking questions, it it terrifies <laughs> a lot of people, which is probably why you decided to write a book about asking questions. Why do yeah. we have these these reactions, like these really strong reactions around it, this idea of asking questions, like particularly around money? Uh, well, it's it's funny. It terrifies me too. I mean, I, I'm a journalist by <laughs> trade and I'm, I do interviews for a living and I'm still somebody who gets really, really nervous and oftentimes won't raise my hand in a room full of people. It's it's just a scary thing because nobody likes being rejected. Everybody thinks that because they, everybody thinks that the other person probably knows better or has more knowledge <laughs> than they do, and 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 some of it is also just pride. People. Is even when people really, really, really need help, a lot of people don't want to ask because they don't want to be a burden on other people or they don't want to see themselves as the person that needs this sort of help. And that's all completely understandable. And that's why in the book, I really try to take an empathetic approach. Uh, instead of you know talking down to people, shaming them, that sort of thing, because it's hard, and yes. and and really, 
it really kind of what it gets down to is that it's something that you just need to do over and over again where, I mean, I, I tend to talk in sports analogies, so it's really kind of about getting your reps in, right? And kind of failing and understanding that if you do fail, if you are told no, you're going to come out the other side fine and m- live on to, uh, you know, to ask the next question. So it's, it's, it's a difficult thing. And I, I think that the idea is important and I hope that this book will open people's eyes to the things that they can do if they're willing to ask questions. So I'm really curious when you when you have one of those moments yourself being even the expert that you are and you get you get really nervous how do you lower the temperature or calm yourself down because I think everybody listening is is really curious about how do I like how do I deal with the emotions of of asking questions for me it's I I do I I take I focus on my breath and just kind of just kind of calming myself down. And it's something that I've talked with my son about and, and that I, that I do myself as well. When things get really intense, you just kind of close your eyes and, and take a couple of deep breaths and, and kind of center yourself a little bit that way. But it's, it's also kind of about understanding that these feelings are okay and that you can get through them and that that your your breathing is kind of your way of telling your body okay it's going to be okay this is a new thing but we're going to be okay and we just need to kind of settle a little bit and again it's it's not an easy thing to do <laughs> but it's it's something that i've found helpful it's it's amazing how sometimes we forget the really our only job in life is to breathe. <laughs> is to breathe and and breathe oxygen in and by doing that simple thing it really can calm the body, calm the nerves and and get you to refocus. So I love that that is your your way of uh you know dealing with these these kind of intense situations. All right, I want yeah. to jump into into some of these questions that you laid out in the book, and there are tons of them. So, you know, I there are no spoilers here. I definitely want everyone to pick <laughs> up a copy of the book because this is, I think, something that you put on your bookshelf forever. And whenever you have a situation or scenario, you kind of come to this book and say, "Okay, <laughs> how do I deal? How do I deal with this?" Uh, I, I want you to kind of guide us through some of these. I know the first one that I want to talk about, you are a credit expert. I, you've spent a lot of your career talking about credit cards and uh, banks and all of that good stuff. And you have a lot of lot of information on this. So I, I have a really, a question that's been asked of me many times and something I feel is kind of hotly debated can you actually ask to have your your credit card annual fee waived? You absolutely positively can. Um it's it's funny I was at a uh, a work party with with my wife standing in line at a at a food truck talking with somebody about uh, about my book and this uh this man who I'd never met before standing in the line with him told me about how he had um how he had negotiated down on a regular basis um his uh his like $400 annual fee on his credit card and they didn't always waive it for him but sometimes they would say well we're not going to waive it but here's 20,000 points or mm, here are wow. other things that we can do for you so it it does happen I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say that your four hundred or six hundred dollar annual fee card is going to be uh, that that annual fee is going to be easy to waive. It's a whole lot easier if it's eighty nine or ninety five dollars, but you absolutely positively can do that. Um, it's something that that banks expect to a degree and that they know how to handle. So there's really no risk in asking at all. And what sort of like how do we phrase that question if if we're calling in? 
Yeah. Honestly, sometimes it's just about asking where you say, you know, I've been a good customer for, for many years. Um, but I wanted to see if you would be able to, uh, waive this annual fee and you can kind of leave it a little bit ambiguous there. Um, and, and oftentimes it's really not much more difficult than that. Some questions in the book are a little more nuanced and a little layered, but with a couple of these credit card asks, it, it really is fairly simple. And you have to understand that they probably aren't going to waive it permanently, for one. They may not waive it entirely, so you may end up going from you know, 400 or 150 to 50 or to 75 or something like that. Still or, good, right? <laughs> it's still good, absolutely. Or they could counter offer, like I was saying, with um, with extra points or something along those lines. And and really, what it comes down to is that they're never going to say no. How dare you ask? We're slashing your credit limit, and <laughs> you're 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 off the Christmas card list. That stuff that just <laughs> oh, no. stuff just doesn't happen. So. There's really there's really no risk in asking. Okay, here's one that I think we all want to know about. You talk about asking to get a lower rate on your rent or your mortgage. And I think this is something that we don't normally think is negotiable or there's any room to negotiate. What do we need to know there? Yeah, that that one is is certainly one of them that can be a little more complicated. And the sometimes your chances of success aren't always as high. I mean, we, you know, in a huge city like in New York or LA or places like that with a really hot rental market, sometimes there's just nothing you can do. And, and you, you ask the question, but you, you fully understand there's really no incentive <laughs> for them to, to work yes. with you. But there certainly are other times when it can. And really the important thing there is to understand the marketplace, understand kind of what else is available, but also being able to pitch yourself as a, uh, as the good renter that you are. And, um, and that can be really good, especially if you're somebody who is facing a rent increase, for example, and you understand that it's oftentimes it is far more it's it's far less expensive for a landlord to hold on to that renter instead of going and finding a new one. So again, you kind of have that position of power to a degree when it comes to rent, but it is also definitely one of those situations where it it, it can be very seasonal. It can depend on where you live, even as we all know, a specific area of a specific town. So it's that's one of the more challenging ones for sure, but it's still worth uh, worth checking out. I I really love this this message of taking your power back because so many of us feel not powerful at all when we're dealing with money and we're asking questions yeah. and we feel very nervous or shaky in that process and i think it's a it's a maybe a obvious thing well of of course you would you know why wouldn't you want power around money but i think how we operate in our daily lives around money even those of us who are experts is not from a place yeah. of power it really is from a place of of fear and so i think you know, whether it's giving somebody a script or even just giving them permission to ask a question and be okay that the answer might be no and that that's not the end of the world is is such a I mean, it, it, it's such a gift, I think, that that you're giving people with this. Uh, thanks. I, I appreciate that. And, and one of the things that I wanted to kind of get across well, a, a few things. One is that people have more negotiation experience than they realize. Ooh, yeah. They may not Tell me be about as that. high stakes. Uh, yeah, it, it may not be as high stakes as kind of what, you know, some of the things in the book, but 
we all negotiate whether it's talking with our partner about you know what what temperature to set the thermostat in the house <laughs> or who's going to uh, who's going to drive on what day in the carpool to take the make sure that the kids get to soccer practice? Things like that are negotiations, and and parents do it with kids all the time, even though we probably shouldn't. And um, and and that's an important thing to remember. Just because you're dealing with a bank or a gym or a mechanic or a car dealership, it doesn't really change a lot of the basics of negotiation and which which is important for people to to understand where it's really people just trying to develop a win-win situation where both sides are happy neither side feels ripped off and both feel really good about the situation and and that's that's one of the really important things that uh, that I want people to get out of the book Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T A L K A N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T O S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. All right, Matt, it's time to play your relationship with money is game. So question number one, if you had to describe your relationship to money as a cartoon character, who would it be? It's it's such a good question. Um, I think that... The the first thing that really came to mind was maybe like a maybe like a Lisa Simpson um, and somebody <laughs> who um, who always kind of tries to do the right thing and and maybe doesn't always quite get it right and has had their had their <laughs> stumbles in the past. Um, I, I feel like that might be a, uh, 
a good choice because I I'm somebody who had ten thousand dollars in credit card debt when I was in my twenties and basically wrecked my life for several years. And I also had a car payment on a brand new car at that time because of a bad decision. And you you just you you just hope that you can learn through um you can learn through those mistakes and mistakes of others and and come out the other side. That is our first Lisa Simpson. So I love that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two, tell me, how do you feel about money? Oh man, I have had a complicated relationship with money. And I mean my 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 general feeling about money is that it really is about freedom and having more money and being able to put some money aside and to save some money um is is really it's it really kind of brings again that that freedom where if you make enough money where you don't have to worry about making paying all the bills at the end of the month that's a hugely freeing thing if you have enough money in savings where you have a horrible job you're being treated poorly by your boss and you can tell him to shove it and leave and you have enough to be confident that is that is freedom and there's so many other examples like that so i i guess i would kind of look at it that way um and I, I I try to I try to also pay that forward to whether it's you know donating or stuff like that, but also just kind of paying the knowledge forward. And that's that's certainly a theme of the book too. All right, last question. If you could get a do-over for one money mistake, what would it be? <laughs> that's uh, that's interesting. Um I honestly, I probably would have been smarter about how I handled things in my twenties and, um, and not necessarily run up the, the debt that I had, or certainly not bought that, uh, bought that car that, uh, that I bought that would, that would certainly be one, um, yeah, you know, honestly, living in living in a town like Austin that has exploded over the past 20, 25 years, might have bought a couple of pieces of property back then, uh, and to even taken on a little bit of debt to do so because I would have come out just fine. But um, yeah, I think I would probably go back to that uh, those that credit card spending in my twenties that really put me behind the eight ball for a while. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. 
After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. This episode is brought to you by JLL. Get an insider view into the world of commercial real estate with JLL's podcast, Trends and Insights, the Future of Commercial Real Estate. Whether you're curious about making cities more sustainable, the evolution of office space, or AI opportunities, this podcast will help keep you a step ahead. Tune in for candid conversations with business leaders about the biggest trends impacting how we live, work, and play. Subscribe to Trends and Insights now at jll.com slash podcast. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. Yeah, talking about... Uh, being in a, a relationship, you you have a chapter all on relationships and navigating finances, which I thought was really insightful. And whether it's your partner or your family or your friends, you have all sorts of different tips. And I know that it can be really hard to talk to your parents about money. Most of us don't have a yeah. clue about our parents' financial situation. And as we're getting older, our parents are getting older, and it's it's probably important to have some of these these conversations but you know there there are a lot of things we don't even know what to ask so how do we navigate in in situations like that asking these these questions and uh you know figuring out what we need to know about our our parents uh money situation yeah really that's it's it's one of the most impactful questions in the whole book but one thing that's really important in people who I spoke with for the book um, is that most parents are going to be okay with having that conversation. And that's, wow. that's an important thing to remember and an important place to start. It's not always going to be the case. Relationships vary from family to family and even within families, we all know. So it's so that dynamic can be really, really difficult, especially when you're talking again about power, about potentially shifting the dynamic of power from the parent having control or having the biggest say to a uh, to a uh, daughter or son coming in and trying to take a little bit more control. That can be a really a really kind of perilous <laughs> thing but it's it's such an important conversation to have are there any are there any sections or any questions in the book that are, are just really impactful to you that really stand out as like do nothing else ask these questions well the the in the in this section about uh careers and jobs and and college um, I thought that it was interesting that that people don't understand when kids are going through and parents as well are going through the college application process that there is room for negotiation there too potentially and in college is one of those things that we don't really necessarily think that we can negotiate on. And in some colleges, you can't. I mean, there are obviously 10, 15% of schools in this country that are so overwhelmed with people who want to go there that they have no incentive to work with you um, on merit aid and that sort of thing. But the truth is that most colleges in this country do have incentive to work with you. And if you go in... um, with a kind of a position of humility, you're not kind of stomping in demanding, you know, to get more merit aid or anything like that. If you treat it respectfully, if you go in um, to that negotiation with some good data points, but also with a position of kind of kindness and again, humility, 
um, you oftentimes can get colleges to be able to bring down that sticker price. And as we all know, there have been a million headlines written about just how devastating student loan uh, debt has been. So anything that can be done to bring down the amount of debt and the overall crazy high cost of college is such an important thing. And it was one, to me, one of the most interesting discoveries as I was writing this book that, uh, that I, I found really pretty meaningful. It's interesting because specifically around college, that's another one of, I put it in the same category as, as like rent or mortgage that you, you sort of feel like, absolutely, that's off the table. There's no way I can, I can negotiate anything in, in those particular sectors. But I, I think that the power of, of asking these questions and maybe the answer might be yes, or, or like the credit card annual fee, maybe it might be, well, I can't. I can't lower the 400 to zero, but I could lower it to $200. And then thinking about the extra money that you save and how that can compound and multiply and be added to your other money goals is, is really exciting. And I think what I love about your book is not just that it lays out these questions, but it also lays out scripts so that we don't have to try to fumble through our own words <laughs> to figure out yeah. what to say. And I, I was just talking to my husband, Jeff, yesterday. He'd gone to the grocery store. And for some reason here, mayonnaise has just gotten super expensive where I live. And uh, there was a, a brand of mayonnaise that, that he loves. And it it was on sale for a ridiculously low price. And he, when he went to uh, the, the cash register to check out, he, he thought, okay, that's that's a lot of money that I'm spending on mayonnaise. I thought this was a sales <laughs> price. And when he asked these questions and was proactive, the the grocery bill ended up being dropped about 18 bucks because he noticed there was a difference. And so wow. one of the sections in your book talks about all the questions that you can ask and the scripts that you can ask at grocery stores. And I just, I would have never thought of that. I mean, again, I just go in and, and pick stuff up, put it in my cart and, and buy things. And so I am curious, how did you go about the process of not only uncovering these questions, but also uncovering these different scripts to, to ask places? Yeah, that's for one, that's that story is is really interesting because because grocery stores are one of the more challenging places because generally you're not going to be able to go up to the checkout counter at a Kroger and haggle over the price of a loaf of bread and a box <laughs> of Cheerios. But there are things that you can do to make sure that that you're getting the best price. And one of them is to make sure that you're getting charged for the right thing and not, you know, not double billed or anything like that. So checking that receipt, especially if you're buying 25 things, that's, that's an important thing because those little mistakes can add up. But to, to answer your question, what I did is I, I spoke with 110, 115 people um, over the course of many, many months and just asked them to tell me their stories about their own personal situations and their own views around a bunch of these asks because my my focus is credit and debt but i am not a relationship expert i am not a shopping expert i am not a mortgage expert by trade so i went looking to talk to the people who i know who know these spaces best but also just regular folks to kind of see what they knew, what they had done, and the the different things that had worked for them, and then just kind of took it all and and tried to come up with these scripts, sometimes like scripts that I had used or conversations that I had had before, but also sometimes stuff that that people had uh had told me and and honestly part of what it was was um sketching out on a notepad with pen and paper kind of a decision tree of you know what happens if this person says this or this person says this 
and it all kind and and trying to think through all of the various scenarios and various responses that you could get and to to not have these scripts be you know a hundred a hundred page screenplay <laughs> and have them be useful but have them also cover enough scenarios where it uh it's it's useful wow i can imagine those decision trees that is a lot of work <laughs> to walk out all of these examples uh, i know i actually am quoted a couple times in your book and over one of my my favorite tricks of calling your cell phone an internet company to ask them if you're if you have the best rate and i've i've been sharing that for years on on this show and so many people will email into me and say, oh my gosh, I tried it. I asked the question and I save $20 a month or $30 a month or whatever it might be. So it's fun, I think, hearing from from just everyday people too that yeah. they they use these scripts, they ask these questions and it's like it's like you won the lottery, right? Even if you save a couple dollars. Yeah, and and it's it's an important thing, and the the book is meant to be, it's meant to be written up, and it's meant to be scratched on, and and all that. And we we also include a scorecard at the end of it where you can keep track. And a, a, on the page that the scorecard is, there's an email address, and it's success at mattschultz dot com where I want people to email me and tell me the things that they've been able to do and tell me their success stories because um you know it, it, any any first draft is a first draft right so anything that I can learn from people who have done these things who read the book who can uh, who can give me ways that I can make this better and make it more impactful and kind of keep spreading the message um all the better so i tried to make it as as interactive as as i possibly could where did the idea for this book come about did were you just sitting one day and thinking okay this would be really great if if everybody you know got out there and asked asked these questions well, it's two, a couple of places. One, the book's dedicated to my dad, who passed away a couple of years ago. And the thing that he would always say is, you know, it never hurts to ask. And it's one of those things that I always kind of admired him in terms of his ability to walk into a room and know the life story of everybody in the place within five minutes. <laughs> So the book, I have that da that kind of dad too. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. And I did not get that gene um, <laughs> from my dad, but he was he was kind of the inspiration for the overall concept. But the the but yeah, I really knew that I had something when over the course of time in my my job at Lending Tree, I've quoted this this data point of the fact that about 75% of people who ask for a lower interest rate on their credit card get one and the average reduction is about 6 percentage points but far too few people ever ask i've i've given that uh that bit of data i can't tell you how many times in interviews <laughs> and all the time i have reporters um say Oh my God, I had no idea. Why don't we talk about that more? People should know those sorts of things. And when I kept getting that response, I was like, okay, this is something that needs to be shouted out through a bigger microphone, bigger megaphone. And there are a million other things like that in the personal finance space and just in life in general. And as I kind of sketched it all out, it really kind of evolved into the book that it is now. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm really proud of it and it means a lot to me. And I, I think it can help a lot of people. Yeah. That asking for a lower interest rate, everybody needs to pick up the book and learn how to do that because that is, I think for a lot of people, probably one of the most 
fear-inducing conversations to have, but yeah. the stats and your research behind it are just so incredibly compelling. And if you owe money on that credit card and you can get that interest rate reduced, I mean, wow, you could pay that off so much quicker and just save so much money. I think it's 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 such it's such a great all of these are just such great tips, you know, and I think yeah, and and it's important to understand that 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 success rate with the credit card APR ask isn't just, you know, a 2023 2024 thing. Um these numbers have been this way during the pandemic, before the pandemic, in good times, bad times, it's these um, these numbers kind of stay about where they are. And again, it's because it's because banks have an, uh, have a vested interest in keeping you happy. And if they can give you a few extra po- uh, points of reduction to keep you a good customer happy they're oftentimes much more willing to do it than you expect. So it's really important to to make that ask. So I want to return to the start of this conversation, this idea that you have more power over your money than you think. How can we, Matt, how can we break, embrace this idea going forward so that we can use your book as, as, a, as a springboard to really start embracing the power that we do have with our money going forward? Well, I think it's about setting some goals and figuring out what you want to accomplish with your money and kind of maybe where your, where your pain points are. Um, cause this, this book tackles 45 different situations, but they're not things that you face every day. People don't go to funerals every day. People don't go to weddings every day. People don't get mortgages every day, but they but there are a lot of different situations in which we will face next month next week couple times this year so if there is a situation where you are really struggling maybe you have a lot of debt and you need to find a way to get that under control um asking the right questions and being willing and able to advocate for yourself is such a powerful thing because there's so much data out there about how how many people are losing sleep over debt and their finances and that sort of thing and people tend to lose sleep when they feel powerless and things are out of control and there are little things that you can do even little first steps to take a little bit more control over your finances can really make a difference. And we talk about a lot of them in this book. We've spoken about them uh, today here. And if you can kind of find one that you can get started with and maybe have a little bit of success and then kind of get that ball rolling, it can be really meaningful. And even if that first one, even if you're not successful, the fact that you did it and you survived the nervousness and the freak out that may come along with asking, (laughs) that's useful too. It's all about taking little steps to take control of your financial situation because nobody is going to do it for you. If you haven't done so already, you should hop online and order Matt's book, Ask Questions, Save Money, Make More. It is a keeper for life. Plus, as we shared in this conversation, I even share a few of my favorite tips and questions to ask in the book. It's really hard for me to pick out just one of my favorite topics, but I will say I really enjoyed the section on saving money shopping. I just would have never thought to ask questions to get a better discount or save money at the grocery store without being some crazy mad couponer. You can find out more about Matt on his website at mattscholes.com. You can also order a copy of his book everywhere books are sold. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. As always, you can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode guest, as well as the sponsors who make this very show possible. Please head over and give them some love. I will see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. 